Hello Spark fans and welcome back to Advancing Spark. So today we're doing a follow-up video from a video we did a week or two ago to do with Delta streaming. And what I want to talk about is that awkward piece where if we're streaming changes from Delta, we're streaming updates, anything we get, we're doing some kind of stream. But we've got a pen mode, we've got update mode when we're trying to insert using Spark structured streaming. And sometimes that's not good enough. Because the whole point of having a Delta table is the ability to do things like a merge to do real proper good upsets, but without actually managing the full stream cache. We're not talking about managing an ongoing stream. We're just talking about using streaming as a mechanism to get data changes into our Delta tape. So there is a method for being able to use the inherent inbuilt native merge functionality of a Delta table and use the streaming functionality of a Delta table. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how you take a straightforward structured streaming query. We'll use the same one I used in the last video and how you change that to start doing merges into the destination table. And it's a bit tricky, but it's pretty damn cool. So we'll go into that. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, let us know in the comments what you think, if you're going to use it, and if you've got any suggestions for future videos. So let's have a look. Okay, so I've got the same uh, notebook I used last time. I'm going to just initialize it. So we're saying, I want you to take a, uh, we're using that Databricks um, flights data set. Again, reminder, constant reminder, Databricks always has a load of sample data built in. We're writing that out to a table called data uh, flights full. And then taking a limit and taking just 10 records, 10 sample records from that. And a slight change from last time, I'm adding in two derived columns, a primary key hash and a change key hash. So it will make sense if we just have a quick hop down and take a look at that data. Uh, we've got a couple of columns that I'm combining into a hash to say, this is my primary key. This is how I uniquely identify this record. So I'm saying a combination of the date, the origin and the destination, that's going to be my primary key. And combination of my delay and my distance, they're my variables. That's what I can change. So I'm expecting if a new, new record comes in and it's got the same date, origin, and destination, that's an update to the existing record. If it comes in with a different combination of those three, it's a new record, it's not the same. Now that might be a bit contrived for this flights record, but I just want to give you an example of quite commonly how we do that. So I'm saying add these two columns in, do a SHA2 hash, take all of these columns and combine them with a column, uh, comma separator and do it 512 star. So fairly heavy handed, but we're just going to have two hashes that we can work with and I'm making that into a separate data frame. So we'll have two data frames. We'll have one, which is our big chunky source data, uh, and then a smaller little one, which is just kind of our, that's our little table that we're working with. And this is, this is the source for our data. Okay, so we've got that. This is our starting set. We've got 10 records, which is a starting set of data. Uh, and I've got a few queries to add some more records into it, and more importantly, to do an update. And we'll come back to that in a second. So. Assuming that, and again, if you need more details than that, go watch the last video, I'll drop a card in so you can kind of go and have a look at it. I think it appears up there. And you'll get the full details, I go a lot slower. Given we've already done that demo, I'm not gonna waste your time. So let's have a look through this. This is the original. We're saying, okay, I wanna read stream, I wanna take all that data out. Um, I'm gonna insert a timestamp. I'm gonna write it out to a Delta table. So we're gonna have a new Delta table that's gonna Exist at a location, and this is what we did last time. So that we know that works, we know that runs. So I can quickly say, go get my source data, add my column, and then stream it out. And this is a trigger once stream. So I'm just gonna go once, going, what my records have? Uh, I can't do update mode, sorry. I need to do a append mode. So it's just taking that one cut of data, saying, take it out, see how many rows there are, push it out, and that's it. Stop. So it's not gonna be an ongoing stream, so we can see it's already finished. Uh, and it gets my 10 records, pushes them out, that is it, nothing else. Um, and I'm just gonna do a quick refresh of a Hive table just to make sure we can go and have a look at that new streams table. Okay, good, in, working, that's where we were. So last time when we were looking at Delta streaming, this is the point that we got to saying, cool, we can stream from Delta, uh, and I can just keep running this, and any new records that get appended into that source Delta table, we'll just see flushed down into our destination. But that change that we're talking about. So when I come in here, I've got this update SQL statement. And I'm saying, well, update my, um, so do a new insert into my Delta source table, except take 
some records. So I'm taking some existing records. I'm making a duplicate of them with updated distance. So I'm saying override the existing distance, change it to 999, give it a new change key. It's that same change key. And I'm just saying poke 999 in there as that change key. It's just going to buy an extra 10 records. I'll see some of those primary keys in there now duplicated. Um, in fact, all of them are going to be duplicated. And we'll see these updated records for that 999. Okay, so there we go. So we've got a load of ones in there that are 99. To each one, I've got my original record and I've got my new copy of that record. So you can see they've got the same primary keys. They are the same record. Um, but my change key is different. So between two ones, so those two are the same. And I can see I've got different change keys because that distance has been updated. So I've got, I've got a set of data. So I've got my original 10. I've got a new 10 that I've changed that I want to apply these changes to my source table. And normal streaming won't do that. Again, so normal streaming uh, in our original data set, we're just using append mode. It's just going to add them. So essentially, this table would look the same as my original table. I'd have two cuts of that same data, and that's not what we want to do. We want to do a merge. So that's the question. How do we do a merge? How do we even... I don't even know. So when we're talking streaming, what we end up doing is a thing called for each batch. So... Spark streaming is essentially micro-batching anyway. It's not a true streaming service. It essentially gets some updates, applies them, starts the next load of updates, applies them, and goes in that little circle of doing little micro-batches. Um, and depending on how often we trigger, in this case, I'm triggering once, it should do one cycle. Get a load of changes, apply those changes. Done. Get some more changes, apply those changes. And it kind of just does that, basically as a single micro-batch, a trigger to say, what record should I apply? So there is a thing that we can do here saying, I don't want you to run using your, your kind of traditional batching. I want you to do a thing called for each batch. And what that's saying is rather than using the straightforward stream writer, rather than using the built-in way of getting data and writing it down into my um, particular query, I want you to take the data you are about to pass to the stream writer and then do something else. So I'm essentially hijacking it and passing it to a different query. And essentially what we're going to do is pass it to a straightforward batch Spark command. So anything that you do normally, any dataframe.write commands that you can normally use, you can put inside this for each batch command. So every time it tries to do a micro batch, it'll go and run that other code. Now, if the other code is not performant, it means your streaming batches will be hilariously slow and it won't stream very well. In this case, we're doing a trigger once. We don't really care if it's not that performant. And if you're doing things like merges on the fly, you need to be super careful about performance. So it's not magic, but it's pretty cool. Okay, so what do we need to do to do a merge? So there's a few bits and pieces. So first, I'm gonna bring this in. So we're gonna do a PySpark merge rather than a SQL merge. So I'm bringing in the Delta tables library. I'm saying there's a new Delta data frame, which is, and I'm pointing, I'm using Hive. This case. So you can do for name and point it to a hive reference, or you can do for path and point it to a place in the lake. In this case, I'm saying we'll just, whenever I refer to delta df, I want that to be that delta stream.flight stream. So that is this original destination that I've already saved. I want that to be the thing I use for my destination. Okay, so that makes sense. I've got that. And then the way this for each batch works is it needs some kind of um, destination. Right, so it needs a function. I need to tell it this is what to do um, when I kind of, uh, when I activate. So I need to have defined some kind of uh, merge to diff. So it's a function that it's expecting to call. And again, this isn't a like UDF style column by column function. It's going to pass a whole batch over to this. And what it does is it by default expects it to have a data frame and a batch ID. And it's a little bit weird in that we don't actually have to specify those inputs. So we say, for each batch, call this function name, and then automatically pass it to that function, the data frame and the batch ID. A little bit weird in that it's automatically understanding what the function expects, passing the relevant things to the, um, that function, and we don't really get a chance to intercept it here. But essentially, we can now just write something that would be a normal batch command. So now I'm going to cheat and do a blue Peter. So here's what I made earlier. So we're saying inside here, I want to, firstly, I'm just gonna print out a quick statement, doing a quick uh, F string inside the for each batch. This is my batch ID. This is how many rows I see. And I can just say micro data frame dot count. So this data frame object 
I can just interact with. I can just treat it like any other data frame and say, give me a count, pass it back as a string, put that in my printout. So as I run my stream, I'll say, see, this is how many rows I'm pushing into it. I'm doing a drop duplicates. Because if I get in going into a merge statement, if I have multiple rows trying to update the same record, I'll get an error. I'm saying, well, actually, if I get multiple copies of the same record with the same change key and primary key, I can throw that away because that's not going to, they're going to update the same record. Now, if I tried to do that midstream, I'd get loads of problems because actually doing things like um, duplication and uniqueness and all that kind of stuff on a streaming data set will try and do it across the whole stream. So it'll be looking at the data it's already written, it'd be trying to pull out the cached version, it gets very confused. Because I'm in the middle of a batch data frame inside this function, I can just do whatever I want and it will only affect that micro batch. So I can do things like drop duplicates, I can do whatever kind of data frame manipulation I fancy. And then I've got my actual bit of um, data frame goodness. So I'm saying take my delta table, so that delta table that hasn't changed, that I'm always going to have that same delta table, and then take my current micro data frame. Uh, and use that to apply it to. So data frame, call it T, merge into that, on S, so my primary key equals my primary key. When it's matched, so if it, if it finds that primary key already, make sure the change key isn't the same. So again, in a merge statement, I can have constraints to try and affect performance. So don't bother updating it if it hasn't actually changed. Um, if it has changed, do an update. So get rid of the old record, replace it with the new record, make the change, and if it's not matched, do an insert. So if the primary key doesn't exist, I just want to see those new records and then execute. So that's the kind of thing I would have in any other normal batch style data loading. But I've kind of jammed it inside this merge function. Uh, and then as long as I'm calling it here, so for each batch, I'm going to merge into there. I'm no longer doing that. Um, I don't need to give it a streaming place. I don't need to tell it where to go and put that stream. And then that should now work. OK, so let's give that a try. So make sure my delta table has been created. Register my function. So again, that's not doing anything. I'm just creating that merge to df function. And then here I can just run this and we should see that update happen. So did we actually create my updates? I think we did. Yes. Okay. So we've got our updates waiting to happen. That's not been seen yet by the stream query. So we should, fingers crossed, be able to run this and get an end of file because I got rid of my end brackets. Here we go. Uh, and then again, it's, we're still doing trigger once. It's not just going to get one bunch of updates, put it through that merge statement to try and apply them. Uh, but we should hopefully see those changes just apply. Okay, so we triggered once. Uh, we had 30 input rows. Interesting. Um, we should be able to now go and query what's actually in that table. So I'm expecting to see just my original records. There you go, my 10 records, all 999, which is great. So despite the fact that my original, if I go back to the table I'm streaming from, that's the one that's got both copies of that. So I've got 20 records in here with my original row and then my updated 999 row. But then in my destination table, because I merged into it because I dropped any duplicates, I've just got the actual unique set of rows with the final update. The latest set of changes I had is that updated distance. That's pretty damn cool. And that, that's all I wanted to go through today, to just in terms of looking at that, looking at that kind of idea of saying this for each batch. And it takes a little bit of time to get used to that whole idea of you're injecting, you're kind of intercepting the automatic streaming. It does and say, no, take what you were about to do, put it over here, and here's a set of new instructions to do inside each one of those batch loops. So it's an interesting idea. And again, performance can be terrible if you're doing tons of stuff in here. That merge needs to be performant. If I was trying to do this into a partition table, then I should have, you know, uh, my partition key equals, you know, 20, 20, 11, oh, whatever that is, four. Um, you know, that kind of thing I should be able to do. You need to make sure that is um, efficient, especially if you're not doing trigger once. If this is a constantly running full, real uh, structured streaming query, then it's going to be running this for every time it tries to do a loop. Every time it tries to do a little micro batch, it's going to run through this. So this takes five seconds. That means the latency for each of your micro batches is at least five seconds. If this takes two minutes, then the latency for your streaming each update is going to take two minutes. But by default, in structured streaming, it doesn't kick off the next micro batch until the first one's finished. So the longer this takes, the slower the latency that your streaming is going to be, which might be okay because you've got a lot of complexity in there. You've got it's doing something fairly fancy. But 
just be aware, more and more stuff you put in there, the longer it's going to take. Now, you can also use that to do a ton of other stuff. If you wanted to stream out to something that's not supported by structured streaming, you'd do the same way. If you wanted this to be writing out to JSON or to a SQL DB or to some part of Synapse or to anywhere else you can get hold of via a traditional batch data frame writer, you can intercept it here and write it inside your for each batch. It's an immensely powerful part of structured streaming. Now, for me, I love it in doing a trigger once. So if I still got a batch process, if I'm still just saying run this every hour and just scoop up everything that's changed since I last ran, that removes a lot of the, the awkwardness away from kind of uh, me having to do change detection, all that kind of stuff. And I can just now throw it all into a big batch and just say, just, just merge it. Delta has the power to merge. I might as well make use of it. I, as long as I'm doing my things like my primary keys, my change keys, getting that right, that's cool. And there's a lot of things that if you can't do it in streaming, like the dropping duplicates, like the checking for uniqueness, that can be really painful to try and do on a live streaming thing if you only care about the stuff that's coming in, in the chunk of data I'm processing. That means I can do it in my for each batch at the cost of cycle time, at the cost of how long it takes me to process each batch going through my stream. So yeah, really, really cool. Uh, hopefully that is useful and that is a bit of a wacky thing for a Wednesday morning, but it's all good. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've tried it out. Let me know if you have any problems with that. And yeah, if that suddenly kind of triggers any light bulbs and you go, oh, oh, we can use it for, drop it down in the comments, let us know. And yeah, we'll see where we get to with this whole crazy new ways of doing streaming and managing data. Certainly if you're doing things like Lambda architectures or kind of uh, Kappa architectures, this just opens it up to say, well, Kappa architecture, which is just a pure streaming architecture, has limitations because you can't do everything in a pure stream. And everyone else saying, well, actually you can if you just jam some batch style stuff in there and then it's more of a latency question, it's immensely, immensely powerful. So thanks for joining. Again, let us know if you've got any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.